Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Mental Ninja 33. I'm from the Whisker Biscuits, and today I'm starting off a new video series that I think is going to be super fun and also very helpful to people who have never really taken the dive into using the prefab editor and or created a POI for themselves. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm calling the series Building a POI and we're going to do this from start to finish. So you're going to see every single step that goes into building a prefab or a POI for seven days to die. Um, I, you know, have watched numerous videos you know, because we've built POIs before. Um, we built a Eden Center Mall. We built a Badongadonk. What I wanted to do was kind of like throw all of that information together. You know, actually build the POI in real time for you guys to see. And also throw in, you know, tips and tricks that I've learned along the way that can make this process a hell of a lot easier. So anyway, let's get started. Um, some of the first things you should do before you even get started with like figuring out how big you want your POI or anything to be is grab some tools for yourself. So in the prefab editor, if you go up here to the creative menu, you click on that. And if you come over here to the thing that looks like a little stereo, I guess you would call it, click that. And then in the box, you're gonna type dev. So what that does is brings up all of the dev tools that you have available to you while you're building. Um, the most handy is the super digger, which we're gonna grab that and bring that down the paintbrush, and occasionally the wrench will be handy as well. So I'm gonna grab that just to have it on hand. Um, that will come in, into play later on when you're placing certain items and you don't wanna blow up your POI. All right, so to get started, right, we are now in the prefab editor. This is what it looks like. You're not going to use this entire space for your POI. I mean, if you do, that's fine. It will be a massive POI, but keep in mind that the bigger the POI, the more issues you'll have with getting it placed into a world and you'll deal with a lot of lag and a lot of issues with when your sleeper volumes actually get activated, um, it can cause the game to crash, do other crazy things. So it's fun to build a really super humongous POI, but you have to take into account that once it actually gets into the game, that may become an issue. So you have this entire space to work with, which can be overwhelming and you're like, oh my gosh, I really wanna fill this whole thing. That's not what we need to do. Um, so for the POI that I have decided to build, I'm going to be building basically a working stiff factory because I've noticed that in the game, there isn't one. There's one for the shotgun Messiah, there's one for Shamway, um, even Crackabook has you know, the headquarters which is a huge tower. I'm not going to stick with like the tower theme that they have going on, but I am going to be building the working stiff factory and I'm going to be naming it nailed it because I like that name and that's what I'm going to go with. So my footprint isn't going to be as large as say the Eden center mall that we built. It's not going to be as wide, but what you do is you go back into your creative menu because you want to figure out what kind of ground you're going to have around your POI. So once we go back into the creative menu, right here on this first page is where you're going to find the materials that you need to start off to essentially get the base of your POI. So we have stone, we have bedrock, we have dirt. Typically I will stick with the forest ground um, and then you also want to grab asphalt because if you're making any kind of parking lot, that's the material you want to use for the parking lot. So as we're building the groundwork, right, you want to take into account, okay, how big do I want to have this parking lot and figure out, you know, where the asphalt needs to go from there? Because when building a POI, obviously we're going to be doing it from the ground up. So what we want to do, right? We bring the forest ground into our hand. So now you'll see this little triangle. Um, and we're going to, we're going to scoot over here, just kind of stick in the middle of things. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off right here. Okay, we're going to hold shift and hit Z. 
So what that is essentially doing is that's my marker for the, the first part of it. Now, what we wanna do, we're not gonna go straight up that way or straight out this way. We're gonna go diagonally because that's going to give us the entire block that we need to create this platform that we're gonna build our POI on. Once again, Shift Z. So now I have this huge area that's highlighted, okay? So this essentially is going to be where my POI is built. All right, everything on the outskirts is going to be irrelevant to your building. This seems like a fairly decent size that I can work with because, right, if we're gonna have a parking lot, we wanna make sure that we have enough room for the parking lot or any areas outside and then also the building itself. So if you're, once you go up here and you take a gander and you say, okay, that seems like what I want to do, you can fill in the ground. If you're unhappy with it and you're like, you know, I don't think that's gonna be big enough, I need more space, or I think that's gonna be too big, I wanna you know, shrink it up a tad, all you have to do is hit backspace on your keyboard and that will essentially erase this box. So then you can just start over again. Um, it may take you a few times to figure it out and that's fine. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day and neither is a POI. All right, so I am happy with what I have done here. So now what I'm going to do is because I already have my forest ground in my hand, all I have to do is hit L. And what that does is it fills it in with whatever ground you have chosen. Okay, so now I have basically the blueprint of where I'm gonna be building this POI. All right, so we have our ground. Um, now I wanna figure out what type of parking lot I want, how big I want the parking lot to be. Um, do I want it to go this entire expanse? Probably not. So what I can do is I'm gonna bring my asphalt out into my hand. And I think we'll start right about here. Okay, so now we're gonna hit Shift Z and see how it like puts it into the ground, the little blue box. That's what we want, okay? Because essentially what it's going to do is it's going to replace the forest ground with asphalt once we figure out what exactly we're doing with it. All right, so let's go. Hmm, we don't wanna to go too far in. We're gonna go down here a little ways just to show you what, what I'm talking about here to demonstrate. And then we're gonna do shift Z. So now we have, right, this whole area. And all I'm gonna do again is hit L with the asphalt in my hand. If I hit backspace, now it's changed right from forest ground to asphalt. So now we have our first little section of parking lot. Works out very nicely. And it's, it's just a lot easier. It's better than having to place specific blocks all at once. Um, all right, so I think we're gonna do we're gonna do a little bit more here, almost like a secondary parking lot. And we'll go up this way. And obviously I'm running on the ground right now, but you'll be in God mode the entire time, so you can certainly fly around, which is a lot easier. I just like to do this so that I'm close enough to the ground to make sure that I'm doing what I want to do properly. All right, so this one is a little bit wider. So now a handy little trick so that you don't have to redo the entire thing is if you look at your blue box, hold shift and G, you'll see these little arrows come up. And what these arrows do is that means you can adjust your box. So see how I'm pulling it in from the right to match up with that first set of, set of asphalt that we did? This is a handy little thing. So now, when I actually fill this with asphalt, it's only going to fill in that area. So if you accidentally go one block over or one block to the left or it's a little bit too long, you can adjust it holding Shift and G with those arrow keys. Now, my idea for this POI is, once again, I don't want to go, you know, the full on tower that they did in the actual game. What I would like to do is have a couple of different buildings um, attempt to do a dungeon style POI, which I have not 
attempted yet myself. So this will be, you know, a learning experience for me too. But what I'd like to do is have a couple of different buildings, right, that we're, that we connect with catwalks or, you know, whatever else we can think of at the time, um, because this is a creative process, right? You're not going to have all of your ideas all at one time. You're going to have the base idea, you know, a vision in your head. And then, you know, based on what's available to you in game is how you're going to make that creativity come out essentially onto the screen so you can see what you're doing. So I want a couple of different buildings. I'm going to definitely have a courtyard in the middle. Um, basically, you know, off of like a cafeteria type deal so that people can sit outside. And then I may have on each building, I might have like some circular towers going up because we do have a handy dandy thing in the creative menu, which are chimneys that have both white and black smoke. So that's, it's kind of a neat little integration that we have that makes your POI a little more realistic as far as, you know, having actual chimney smoke or smoke coming out of a, of a, out of a factory tower, because that's what you would see in real life. So that is my overall plan. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the creative menu and I'm going to grab the blocks that I need to build. Um, typically with a bigger POI and especially one that may have, you know, a couple of different levels going up, stability is key. And I will typically go with concrete block. Um, because that gives me enough stability and makes it, you know, a, a stronger building in general, right? Because you don't want your POI crashing down to the ground before you even get a chance to enjoy it. So I use concrete. And the nice thing too is when you're doing like we did with the asphalt and you do Z in one corner, Z in the next, and you fill it with L, if you've noticed down here on my hot bar, my asphalt is still at 500, which is the max amount that you will get when you grab a block from the creative menu. My forest ground is still 500 and my concrete will also be the same way. As long as I'm using the Z block, making my big area and then filling it with L. So that's a handy thing too. So you don't need to have your inventory filled with blocks that you're using because you're placing them one at a time. So let's start off. What I'm gonna do is just map out the actual area of the POI. So this isn't gonna be every single building, but it's just gonna be a big flat concrete slab, essentially for me to work off of, you know, and I can use my digger tool and remove blocks as needed. All right, um, I think that Yep, that'll work because I do want a little bit of, of the forest ground on the outskirts of my, my POI, right? Because I may have some kind of, of fence or wall going around this. So that leaves me some room to work with that. You know, you might have sat there and wondered, like, how the heck did they do all that? Um, and so that's essentially what you're going to see in this series from me is how, you know, the process goes with creating a POI. So basically, if you're building walls, right, instead of doing it block by block, we can use our Z tool for that. So what we can do is I'm going to build a wall right here. So I'm going to go down here a little ways, right? I'm going to attempt to line myself up as well as I can. Um, don't worry if you don't get perfectly lined up because you can do like we did with the asphalt area and we can shift G this block and you know, move it as needed. All right, so now what we're gonna do, right? We don't want a short squatty wall. So we're going to shift G and we're gonna grab this top arrow and we're gonna pull up, right? So now essentially this is going to be our wall. And because we're on our concrete, we hit L and it fills it in. So we've already got a wall, <laughs> which makes the process go a lot faster. All right, now we're gonna mimic the same thing over here. And now I've already got two walls and we've barely done anything. So um, it's very handy to be able to do that, to be able to get it all squared away 
in very little time. And ideally what I would like to do is, I'm not gonna do windows yet, so you might be wondering like, why are you blocking this off with all concrete and just making like really massive walls? It's, you know, it's easier to do that and then you can bust the walls out when you're ready to do windows. Right, so this would be like the pathway. This is where I'm gonna have my stairs. So this could be, could be like a, somewhat of like a column type of deal. And then we can have windows in between that. So I'm just gonna fill this, fill this in like this so that I remember that I wanna do like kind of floor to ceiling windows right here in the front. And remember guys, this is not, you know, this is not, it's not going to be a perfect process all the way through. You know, there's going to be mistakes that are made, um, you know, entire things that may have to be knocked down, blown apart, and that's okay. As long as you realize that this process is not easy, it's, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. It's going to take time. It's going to take a lot of thinking. You know, you may get frustrated with it, but in the long run, by the time you're all said and done, you'll have something that you're proud of. Because you will have built it yourself. And that in itself is awesome. Oh, and see what I did? What I accidentally did was I didn't fill in, or I filled in the wrong area. So now I need to blow those out. Because we want this to be open, remember, for our, our uh, windows. And also be very careful with the digger tool. Um, that's a little tip, because once you actually get things really like built and situated and you know maybe you're starting like the decoration process of things the digger tool has a mind of its own so if you're like hey i just need to blow like this whole section out real quick and you start you know just like pointing and clicking next thing you know you're blowing out like the back wall of your poi that's all the way at the back of it so just be careful using the digger tool it's a lot of fun but it can also make your life a living hell when you've accidentally blown walls out that you didn't realize. All right, so let's get this wall done. So there, we have a little something going on here. Oh, see, I'm definitely not wide enough. That's how many blocks. Let's see, one, two, three, four. All right, I need four for an opening over here. And I only have two, all right. You know, and the order in which you do things is not necessarily super important. Um, the biggest thing is to make sure, obviously, you get your ground the way you want it to be. Um, you have your POI itself mapped out for the most part. I mean, there are going to be changes. You know, you can expect that, but you at least want the groundwork done. And then everything else will just come with time. Um, as we're building, you'll see, you know, I make changes here and there, or I decide, you know, I hate the way that fucking looks, so now I need to, to swap it out with something else. Um, you know, it's not a perfect science. It's not a perfect, perfect way to do anything. You know, and the game itself doesn't necessarily cooperate. So you may end up having you know, certain times during the building process where you just want to throw in the towel and you want to say, I'm done. I don't want to, I don't want to fucking do this anymore. But you just have to push through because eventually you will have something that's amazing and you can be proud that you, you stuck with it.
Okay, guys, so we have we have some of it started, and one thing that I want to make sure that you are aware of is that when you go to save your prefab, right, you want to make sure you name it something that you are going to recognize. So I na nailed, named mine, nailed it, working stiff, um, because that's essentially what I'm building. Now, once you save it, you will see the size of your prefab. Um, unfortunately, you won't see that ahead of time. So that's why I said just make sure that you're not making it entirely too big, um, but you're not making it too small either. Now, when when you first create it, you know, if you find, like, maybe name it just a test for maybe your first time, just so that when you go to name it and you see, you know, oh, maybe your size is like ridiculously too big, then you can, you know, kind of look at the area, decide where you want to start next time. And then you can name it, you know, that final name that you're going to be using once you actually get the size down. So the size of mine is 79 by one, right? Because we don't have any, it's, we don't have any height yet. So the height is always your middle number. So we have 79 wide and then 97 deep. So that's actually a pretty decent size. Um, I believe their actual Shamway Tower and Shotgun Messiah Towers are about, they're around like 80 or 81 for width and about the same for depth. So we're kind of sticking around the same, the same size for that, which is not bad. It's not a bad thing. Um, here's where you'll find some other information. Now, obviously, we have no loot yet because we haven't put down any loot chests or loot boxes or garbage bags or any of that. Um, if we decide to turn this into a quest for the trader, which we probably will, um, we most likely will set it as a tier 5. Um, and if we did like a fetch, it would say, you know, it would have a number here for fetch. Uh, restore power is actually not anything you should worry about or block entities um a show quest clear count will be necessary once again if you set it as a as a quest for the trader and then sleepers will not show up until we do sleeper volumes for the prefab but that's towards the end of the process um we aren't actually going to do anything with sleeper volumes until we're just like we're pretty much done with the actual building and with the loot and we're going to you know, start placing our zombies and then figuring out the, the sleeper volumes. That's kind of like one of your last steps. So we don't need to worry about that right now. But I think that is pretty much all I wanted to show you guys in this first episode is essentially how to get your groundwork going. Um, maybe do a couple of your, of your walls. Where to find some key information. Where to make sure that you're saving your prefab so that when you come back to work on it, it's there. But I think that's going to be it for part one. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it out with other people that you think might enjoy it. And if you're new, consider subscribing. Um, I will be trying to post these types of videos at least two to three times a week so that you can, you know, stay up to date with the progress on the Nailed It Working Stiff Tower that I'm building. And uh, I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.